Welcome to the Comic Scoop for the new release review of May 18th, 2022. I split this video up into two um, because I have a decent selection of both indie comics and uh, mainstream comics, and I didn't want to exceed my limit of 30 minutes. So this video is going to be focusing all on the indie comics, mainly by image, but... Um, I have one Boom Studios just to mix it up a bit. And so for this video, I am going to start with a brand new first issue and end with a finale. Or as the Mad Hatter would uh, like to say, start at the beginning, and when I get to the end, stop. Now, this very first one is called I Hate This Place. Now, here I have the cover B, which uh, features the explicit title, which I am... Uh, Kindly enough, uh, covering up for all you kiddos out there, even though I doubt there are any children watching this. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure you can imagine what this is called, and I would like to believe that this is what they actually wanted to call the, the comic. So it's written by Kyle Starks, with uh, great artwork done by Artem Toplin, and some amazing colors by Lee Luridge. And the... Artists and colorists combo uh, work on this really fantastic and eerie cover here. All right, let's jump right into it. So we start off, uh, there seems to be some kind of shady meetup where there's this man with a, a scar and he's double crossing these other two guys trying to get money from some big time boss. Uh, he quickly kills what he deems as the uh, dumber of the two. And uh, while he's making... While he's uh, trying to make an alliance with the other guy, suddenly something swips his head right off and scares the bejesus right out of Mr. Scarface here as he hurries away. All right, let's forget about that for now. Uh, well, before we forget about that, just, like, check that out. I know I said I was trying to be friendly to the kiddos, but, um, I'm sure they don't mind some graphic images. So, we follow this couple, Gabby and Trudy. They're on their way to, uh, move into Gabby's newly inherited cow farm by a great aunt of hers that she hasn't seen since she was a child and has only seen them once. I really love the artwork in this. Um, Trudy is supposed to be some kind of, like, doomsday prepper, which they, um, tease at a lot. Now, they go into this pretty, uh, decent home, and we get a little flashback of the one time Gabby, um, visited. It seems like, uh, the aunt was not happy that her mom brought her over here, and that's all we really get with the uh, uncle, you know, ch kind of chasing them away. Strange, right? Well, they move in, they get all nice and tidied up, and, uh, in the middle of the night, Gabby goes to investigate a strange sound at night. And, uh, she goes into the, uh, the barn, something that spooked the cows. I really love their eyes, that's, <laughs> their expression is great. And as she's, uh, checking them out, something touches her behind her neck. And I really love that whoa expression that she has here. Suddenly, she uh, finds herself somewhere else, and maybe reliving someone else's, um, someone else's memory, as she's stuck to this railroad track, and a train rapidly approaches. Next thing she knows, she is met by this ghoul, who I can only assume was hit by that train. As she's trying to run home, she comes across some other ghouls and finally reaches the safety of her home. Um, I have no idea what's happening here, neither does uh, Gabby. And Trudy, of course, comes sleepily trying to figure out what's going on. And it's not really clear, but I feel like she doesn't actually see these things there. But then sees a light outside. And, oh boy, those zombies or ghosts or whatever was one thing, but what's this? UFO? Who knows? So, within this house, they had found a secret room. Well, not a secret room, but 
there was some room that was closed off with uh, a TV and a bunch of tapes and a chair, and that's it. It was a completely soundproof place. So after this uh, spook fest that they found, they end up going into this room, and they figure out that this is probably why this room exists. And then they find a tape labeled, Watch Me. On this tape is uh, Gabby's great aunt, who tells them that this, uh, this land is haunted, uh, or at least there's something strange with it, and she feels so terrible that there is someone else here now. Because her and her husband were not allowed to leave at all. And um, unfortunately, the new residents will not be able to leave either. She uh, warns them that uh, if they try to leave, they would follow. There will be hitchhikers along the road and other things to bring them back. Uh, and gives her... And gives uh, them... Three very simple rules. Don't let the ghosts touch you. Number two, don't ever go into the woods for any reason. And number three, if they ever see the horned man, run as fast as they can. I am extremely curious about all of this. Here's a place that has zombies, aliens, and some kind of like eldritch wood creature. Who knows? And uh, at the end of it, they're kind of trying to uh, leave, but uh, decide to give it a shot. And their farmhands um, introduce themselves, like people are going to help them get this place into shape. And we're introduced to one final character named Itchy, who happens to be the man with the scar. Uh, we have a nice little uh, letter here by the writer Kevin Stiles on... Uh, their love of wanting to write a horror story and deciding to create this farm that basically gives them the opportunity to write any type of horror story possible. I love where this is going. And like, check out that back cover. All right, so that is our brand new uh, first issue of the week. We're gonna go on to a uh, number two. Alice Ever After. Fantastic uh, cover A done by Dan uh, Panijan. And um, uh, where we left off in the last issue, Alice had uh, admitted herself into a mental asylum. And we're started with this really colorful uh, introduction of her being re yeah, reintroduced to her friends in uh, Wonderland. But reality comes to... And Alice is not in Wonderland, but in a mental asylum with all these strange characters that seem kind of like the mad folks out in Wonderland. She meets this really nice patient who um, uh, at least believes that he is from Royal Descent and shows her around the place. And we get to meet all these other characters that are definitely the Wonderland characters. And they're all different patients, except for Tweedledee and Tweedledum, who seem to be the guards. Yeah, I really like this spread. We get to see all the different characters here. Uh, Alice is then introduced to the head uh, warden, who um, resembles, I guess, the Queen of Hearts. Um, she establishes that there are some rules here, and... You know, Alice must have to, must follow them. They're a very tight ship here. And as Alice leaves, we're introduced to this sleazy character who seems to be a doctor that practices unconventional experiments on the um, on the inmates, on the patients. While we're meeting all these different characters, there's one person who is not quite themselves anymore. I can only assume they have had like a lobotomy or so. And it seems like they're going to be doing this to some of the other characters. We end up with Alice and her um, new prince friend, uh, Matthew. They have broken into the medicine cabinet. And unfortunately, as they're cheersing their sorrows away, are caught. Does not look good for dear old Alice. Got a number number two for you. 
Uh, Town Called Terror. Uh, so Alice Ever After is our one and only Boom Studios. The rest of these, including that first one, is all by Image Comics. Town Called Terror. I really love this one. It's very different. So uh, the main character, who was kidnapped by his own father and brought to this horror-based town, he is... Um, it is brought to his attention that his mother has been kidnapped, or whatever, has been taken. And our our dear old boy uh, Henry here has some kind of power to help with this that his father alludes to. Uh, we saw his father being stitched back together, and they don't really explain much of this, but he had the help from some of their neighbors, I guess, who uh, are called the Franks. And Henry refers to him as trailer trash, so I'm curious to where this is going. Uh, but Henry is against his will, and essentially the world outside this town does not exist as far as they are concerned. He can't contact his wife or anything. So Henry leaves in a storm, and uh, we get to meet um, some of his, the rest of his family. And in between, we get this side uh, bit of his wife uh, hiring a private detective to figure out what had happened to Henry. We're introduced to Henry's sister, Lilith, who is a bartender of this spooky tavern, uh, who serves all kind of folk here, even the hairy ones. Uh, and his brother has been waiting for them. And that's just uh, basically where they leave off here. Henry gets into some kind of scuffle, but uh, that guy seems like he can be easily put back together. And quite possibly might be one of these uh, Franks that they uh, mentioned before. Frank may be short for Frankenstein. That's number two. Now after two, we have issue three, Slumber. Now this is a really fantastic cover B that I absolutely love. The contrast of the beautiful, whimsical, bright colors. And then we meet the Sleepwalker Killer, the ghoul of nightmares, who has kind of like a Samira from the Ring vibe coming out of the shadows. Now, we get a little backstory here of uh, Stegman's daughter, who had been tormented by this night demon until she had uh, been taken away. And uh, Stegman has dedicated the last several years into finding this entity and destroying it. Now we're in present time, where Stegman is in the dreamland of the detective who is researching these, um, the sleepwalking killings. And she explains the history behind her daughter and this demon. And so they go to seek out the bait that this creature has left for them. And they finally find their target. Unfortunately, he possesses the body of the detective's brother. And he was not once Stegman to kill the dream of this brother. Now, the final issue of this uh, video, and also the big finale of the week, is Rain, number five. Here is a very fantastic variant cover. Really love the reflections coming off there in the shards. And, um, yeah, this one was a pretty heavy issue. So, Honeysuckle had made it back home. We see that her two friends are still alive and kicking. They bury the uh, remains of Honeysuckle's um, partner and uh, their mother. And this is a several day process because the rain will not let up. Completely relentless. They have a really beautiful eulogy that Tumbleton had put together. And there were several moments where I had to actually like set this comic down and think for a bit. And it was definitely a heavy one. And after their beautiful little ceremony, where they're rummaging through the garage, they come to find... Where 
where is it? They come to find some buckets of salt um, that are actually the mite, the little mites uh, particles that started the crystal rain. And then it all comes together. It was Tumbleton's father, who was a chemist, that might have been the creator of these crystal rain shards. And after his death, his wife spread these seeds around with Templeton and basically doomed the rest of the world. And in that revelation, now here's a big graphic moment for everyone. The mother comes and kills that, the one shining light in this new terrible world. Templeton can't stand the revelation of what has happened and runs away from both of them. Uh, this part really had me with a uh, big uh, lump in my throat. I thought Templeton was going to get stuck to death by these uh, by the rain, but his mother sacrifices herself to save him. He is fine, if anyone was wondering. Uh, might have had a uh, slightly punctured kidney, but they survive together. And they bury their last two bodies. And they decide that now, uh, now recovering the information of the origin of this rain, they're going to walk to the University of Colorado in Boulder. And if there's no one there, they're going to walk to the University of Colorado in Denver. And if there's no one there, they'll figure something to do. But at least they are together. And there might be solace. And that is the end of Rain. We have a really beautiful poem here, or introduction, in uh, Haunted Universes by J.P. Lewis and Ashley Wood. I really enjoyed that one a lot, actually. It was nice. And then we have a very fantastic uh, editor note from Chris Ryle about the creation of this story and the next projects they're going to be working on thereafter. Rain was fantastic. I highly recommend it. And they'll the collection will come out in August, hardcover. Um, definitely uh, keep your eyes out for August when this comes out because this was a really great read. Joe Hill's story was beautifully um, reimagined by David Boer as a comic, and it's it's great. Zoe Thurgood's uh, artwork is fantastic, and just overall, it was the best read that I've had in a while. All right, that is it for today's video. In a couple days, I'll have uh, the next half featuring Marvel and DC comic stuff. Uh, some big heavy hitters coming out here. And uh, until then, you all have a nice time, and thanks for watching.